We're in Munich, the capital of Bavaria. Join us as we see the sights and taste the tastes of this beautiful city. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Munich, everyone. Look at this, look how be beautiful it is. Hello everybody and welcome to Munich. Servus, I guess I should say. And we are at the top of Peter's Church, 306 steps up from the bottom to get the best views in the city. And if you look right out there, you can see the Frauenkirche or, or the Church of Our Lady. And walking around the panorama out here, it's a little crowded. There's a lot of people there, but it is fantastic. You get some great viewpoints of um, the beautiful city of Munich and we're glad that you're here with us and we're gonna show you a great time here in Bavaria. The heart and soul of Munich is Marienplatz, or Mary Square. This popular gathering and strolling spot features the Gothic New Town Hall, which houses the Tourist Information Office, and Mary's Column, which was erected in 1638 to celebrate Bavaria's victory in the Thirty Years' War. People cram the square at 11 a.m., noon, and also in the summer at 5 p.m. to watch the Glockenspiel, which tells the story of a knight's tournament from 1568 between Bavaria and Austria. Spoiler alert, Bavaria wins. And the Schaefer Tanz, which supposedly ran the plague out of town in the Middle Ages. Whenever we visit a new city, we always take a free walking tour to get our bearings of the place. You can find them in pretty much every city in Europe. Now these tours are called free, but participants are really expected and reminded often sometimes to tip the tour guide at the end of the tour. Uh, these tours are pretty much always good and sometimes they're really great. They normally take you to hidden places that you might not have seen on your own. In Munich, we went with Heart of Munich tours and it was one of the best we've taken. When you visit Munich, we highly recommend taking one of their tours. Here, our guide tells us about the Kings of Bavaria. In this era of Bavaria, there will be four kings throughout the history. The kings will either always be called Max or Ludwig. It just goes Max, Ludwig, Max. Alright, hello everyone. So we are behind Odeon's plots here in Munich. And the golden path of cobblestones you just saw, that was to symbolize some victims of the National Socialist Party or the Nazi Party. And so in the very early days of uh, National Socialism, uh, one of the first battles uh, between members of the Nazi Party and the police force of Munich was really right in front of this monument and several people were died. Several people died, were killed in the, in the, in the fight. And afterwards, after the Nazis came to power and Hitler became the chancellor, uh, they established somewhat of a, kind of like a, uh, a tomb of the unknown soldiers or, or a memorial to the soldiers who were killed. And so the rule was as passers-by came by, they had to give the Nazi salute in front of that uh, memorial. Well, in these days, in the early days, so a lot of people were still very much opposed to the to National Socialism. So a lot of people would take this little alleyway and they would go around um, the, uh, tomb of, uh, the tomb of the soldiers uh, because there were guards there that forced everybody to salute. But a lot of people didn't want to do that. So we'd take this little alleyway to avoid that so they wouldn't have to salute because they weren't all in with the National Socialism uh, uh, propaganda or whatever. So they would sneak by. Well, then word got out to the leaders that, hey, people are, are skipping the salute or com they're coming down this, this alleyway. So then guards would hide right here in this little alcove. And when people would come by, they would jump out and they would get them and, and you know, beat them up, do whatever, torture them. And, and then eventually several people were actually killed, I think, for not rendering the salute out front. And so, you know, now after the war, We've got this alleyway and uh, these golden cobblestones are a memorial of the people who were killed by National Socialism and especially those who refused to give the salute on the front of the Odeon's Platz. Right next to Odeon's Platz is the striking yellow Theaterner Kirche. 
This church was built to commemorate the birth in 1662 of a male heir to the Bavarian royal line. Female heirs got nothing. The church has massive twin towers and a giant ornate dome that stands directly over the royal crypt. The Max Joseph Platz features the residence, which was home to the royal family from 1385 until 1918, and the National Theater, which is home to the Bavarian State Opera. All right, so we are in the famous Frauenkirche, or the Church of Our Lady in Munich. And this beautiful building was built in only 20 years in the 15th century. I think from 14, the late 1460s to the late 1480s was, constru was the construction. So to build a church or any building of this magnitude in only 20 years during that time frame was unheard of. Um, for example, the uh, cathedral in Cologne took like 600 years to build. So how did they build this one in only 20 years? Well, legend has it that the builder um, who was given the task of building it in 20 years was so stressed, he was sitting at home one night looking at his plans and all of a sudden the devil came in and the devil made him an offer. He said, you know, I will help you build this church in 20 years on one condition. And the guy said, okay, what's the condition? And he said, if you build this church without any windows, because I don't want the people who come to worship God to have any light, build it without any windows, and I'll help you build it in 20 years. So the guy said, okay, deal, done. So they started construction, construction went along, and it went great. About 10 years in, they ran out of money. So they had to sell indulgences to raise money to build this church. So basically you were buying um, a get out of jail free card to get your sins forgiven so you could get into heaven, right? And sometimes people would buy indulgences for sins they hadn't completed yet, but they were planning on completing. So if you did a sin, maybe you, you know, did whatever, something really bad, and you say, okay, I've got this indulgence, it clears me of that sin, and then I get to heaven. All right, so they built it, they finished in 20 years. Um, and then the legend, going back to the legend, supposedly the devil came back to check on the work. And he walked in from the back of the church. And so the builder brought him in, so hoping, hopingly, hoping, hoping, hoping that the devil wouldn't notice the window. So the devil walked in from the back of the church, didn't see any light, but then he got, as he walked in, he saw that there were windows. The builder put windows in anyway. Good Catholic guy, I guess. He said, God's people have to have light. The devil walked in, saw the windows, got so mad. He stomped his foot down, left a big footprint, and then he flew away, never to come back. So I don't know what the rest of the story is. Did the builder get punished? I'm not sure what happened. Maybe that's why the devil started uh, doing things for people in exchange for their souls uh, instead of things like this. But anyway, it's a nice story. And supposedly the devil's footprint is in the back of the church. And if your foot fits in it, then, you know, you might be up to no good. So you have to check that out, right? So greetings from the Frauenkirche in Munich. Prost! Here we are in Munich and welcome to the uh, Victulianmarkt in this beautiful beer garden here right in the center of Munich. So um, this beer garden has like several places around the perimeter. You can buy, you know, you can buy your lunch. They have uh, bratwurst, schnitzel, uh, schweinehaxen, which is pork knuckle. So they have all this delicious food, potato salad, breads, and um, they have right over there, they have the beer point. We go pick up your beer and uh, bring it here. Now, there's a sign on the outside of that beer point that shows what kind of beer they're serving that day. So there's six main breweries here in Munich and they rotate through and every day one of those breweries gets a chance to sell its beer here at the uh, at this beer uh, beer garden. Today it's Spottenbräu, Spottenbräu. And uh, so the six main breweries are Augustiner, which is my favorite, Paul Honor, Spot 
Martin, Lovenbroy, or Lovenbrown, um, Hackershore, and um, um, Hofbroy. I believe those are the six. And so those are the only six that can be sold at Oktoberfest, and those are the six that are served, served here at this beautiful beer garden. Now this beer garden culture is you come here, normally you get a beer, but you don't have to drink beer. You don't. You can get wine or you don't have to drink alcohol. You can get alcohol-free beer. You can get apple shorla, which is a wonderful drink with apple juice and sparkling water. And as long as you buy your drinks here at the at the beer garden, you can bring your lunch from home. So you can pack a picnic. You can come here with your family and just have a great afternoon out. Like we have this beautiful sunshine today. Just have a great afternoon here enjoying life in the heart of beautiful Munich. All right, good morning, everybody. So here we are at our S-Bahn station, right underneath our hotel, uh, pretty much literally. And we are about to catch the train to go to Nymphenburg Palace, a beautiful palace here right outside of, I guess, kind of in Munich. But uh, yeah, we've been using the public transport here in Munich for the last three days, and it is phenomenal. It is clean, it is efficient, and uh, it comes on a very regular basis so it's very easy to get around the city and the bonus is that we don't really have to pay for it since we purchased the 49 euro Deutschland ticket the the 49 euro ticket the Deutschland Karte um, we can use that in any city on their public transport system so it's really really a phenomenal deal and basically we're getting around Munich for pretty much for free since the tickets already paid for itself when we went to Cologne last week all right so gonna have a great day and uh, thanks for joining us The Nymphenburg Palace was the summer vacation home of the Bavarian royal family for over 200 years. Today, its gardens are a great place for a stroll or a picnic. Mozart performed a concert here when he was just seven years old. The Bavarian king, Mad Ludwig II of Neuschwanstein fame, was born and baptized here. The Great Hall which dates from 1760, is one of the grandest and best-preserved Rococo rooms in Bavaria. King Ludwig I's Gallery of Beauties is decorated with portraits of his 36 female friends, I guess you might call them. Um, I wonder what the queen thought about this room. But so anyway, perhaps the most famous or infamous of these beauties was Lola Montez. She had a wild life and led the king to his downfall. After leaving the king in embarrassing shambles, she traveled to Australia before finally ending up in the United States where she died at just 39 years old. The Royal Stables and Porcelain Museum displays Disney-esque carriages and finery of the royal family. If you're craving some physical activity, head to the Eisbach Villa or the Eisbach Wave in the English Garden and check out some surfing. Hey everybody, it's a nice, cloudy, cool morning in Munich and uh, we're out exploring. Almost broke my neck stepping off the curb there. We're out exploring the city and seeing some of the wonderful sights of Munich. And we're on our way to the Assams Kirche or the Assams Church. It's supposed to be a real hidden gem in Munich that uh, a lot of people miss. It's supposed to be very beautiful on the inside. Small on the outside, but beautiful on the inside. We're gonna go check it out. Oh, my watch is talking to me. I think I just hit another mile on my walk. So getting a lot of steps, walking a lot of miles and uh, earning our, our delicious beer that we're gonna have later. So thanks for joining us and uh, Hope you're enjoying this trip in Munich. So we are at the Assam Kirche or the Assam Church here in Munich. 
um, a tiny little church. It's not very wide at all. You barely see it from the outside and now it's covered in scaffolding, so it's really hard to see. But if you step inside, I would say pound for pound, the most heavily decorated church I've ever been in in my life. It is just dripping in uh, Baroque or Rococo style. And um, so this church was built between 1733 and 1746. And the story goes that basically two brothers lived on either side of the church and they got tired of leaving to go to church in the bad weather and the winter in Munich. So they built the church right between their houses and it is decorated, uh, uh, it is decorated to the gills with uh, just, uh, with the designs and it'll blow your mind. So if you're in Munich, you have to step inside the Assam Kirche in the Assam church and get a beautiful view of Rococo Baroque architecture that you'll never forget. All right, so this is a plum filled roll and uh, it's a specialty. I got the last one at the bakery and there were people coming in after me asking for them and they didn't have any more. So it smells really good. There's plums in the inside, so let's see. Mmm. 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 Oh man, it's good, it's hot. The plum filling in there is still warm. This is so good. Mm. Now the waitress was a little, little tricky because they have this with plum and they have it with raisin. And we asked her which one was the best. And she said they're both good. But, so we got the one of raisin. And then we saw people getting the plum and it looked really good. So we went back. And this is clearly, the raisin one was good too, but this is clearly the better one. So she was a little tricky, maybe not quite as honest, but uh, anyway, very good, very good place. Quite delicious. Good enough tea, huh? Ah. So Bavarian food is hearty, delicious, and heavy on meat and potatoes, but there are plenty of vegetarian options if needed. Vegans, however, may have a more difficult time finding something to eat. On a clear day, head to the top of the tower of the new town hall for a view of the Alps, which are about 50 miles away. For a dining experience with a nice view of marine plots, head to Cafe Ricart and try some of their delicious Kaiserschmarm, which is like shredded pancakes cooked French toast style, topped with powdered sugar and served with warm applesauce. Oh, it's delicious. And they also offer a full array of other types of delicious treats. And we had to get a Kropfen, which is like a jelly donut for our train ride home. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day to spend with us in Munich. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Leave a comment 
about what you liked or what you didn't like and subscribe for further adventures.